The impact of fatigue on performance has been demonstrated in numerous scientific studies. Much like a machine requires periodic maintenance, the human body requires sleep to repair and rejuvenate itself. Dr. Nita Shattuck of the Naval Postgraduate School discusses the importance of sleep in this 2013 interview. Hi, I'm Dr. Nita Shattuck. I work at the Naval Postgraduate School in Monterey, California. For the past 15 years or so, I've been studying fatigue and sleep uh, and sleep deprivation in, in military populations, so a lot of operational sleep issues. Um, it's been a, an amazing experience to, to be able to go on board ship and in various operational environments and actually see the work that, that our warfighters are doing and to, to be able to measure their sleep, to be able to see how they're performing and what kinds of things we can do to improve that. When we think about the nature of sleep, what we know is that there are times when you're sleeping that your brain is more active than when you're awake. So a lot of things happen when you're asleep. It's very important for memory consolidation. It's very important for healing, both, both of the body and the mind. So it's critically important for, for us. And we know that when we're deprived of sleep, that, that all kinds of bad things happen. The modern day Navy is so complex. I mean, the, the systems that, that sailors operate now are, are much more sophisticated. Um, they have to detect things much faster. So it's a different Navy than it used to be, I would say. And um, we need to accommodate that. We need to, to take that into consideration when we look at our sailors and we say, do I really want this sailor to be alert? We know that it's critically important that they are because of the complexity of these systems that they're operating. Fatigue is often cited as a factor in safety mishaps. Retired Captain John Cordell, former Chief of Staff at Commander Naval Surface Forces Atlantic, remarks in this 2013 interview. Captain John Cordell, uh, I've been in the Navy for 30 years now. I've had uh, about nine different ships, uh, commanded two, USS San Jacinto and USS Oscar Austin, and uh, stood in any variety of watches and shipboard routines, and so, uh, when I got to San Jacinto, I decided to try something a little different after having many years at sea being tired all the time, standing rotating watches, five and dimes, things like that. Um, I wanted to try something different. So uh, um, I think that was a good opportunity to, uh, to do that and see if it worked. I think one of the challenges in the surface Navy is sometimes we wear our lack of sleep as a badge of honor. Um, we poo-poo the aviators who, who parade the crew rest flag. Oh, I can't do that, I have to sleep. Um, they do that because they don't want to kill people by making mistakes based on fatigue. Um, if you look back at collisions and groundings and things like that, you find a common thread, either causal or contributing, of fatigue. Um, so I think the biggest challenge and the, the most frustrating thing for me is that the surface Navy in general, um, uh, there's a reluctance to embrace things that come from aviation or submarine communities and uh, other communities. And there's a reluctance, I think, to embrace things that are different than the way I grew up. Um, and so I think you have to figure out a way to get past that. And that's the command um, that's giving the captains the, the freedom to make these choices, to use these tools, and then to back them up. But then also in the chief's mess, in the first class mess, and on the deck plates. Um, and it, so it's all about leadership, and it's about setting priorities. There are ways to mitigate fatigue in Navy ships, despite arduous underway conditions. One of these is a circadian watch rotation that takes into account the body's natural sleep cycle. Dr. Shattuck discusses the idea behind this approach. You ask about a circadian rhythm. Humans operate on a 24-hour clock. So um, we really are, are, our bodies just work better when we know this is when I sleep and this is when I'm awake. And we really work better when we're sleeping nights and working days. But what we know is in this 24-hour society, there are times that we have to do shift work. So when we do that, what, what we have to do is there will be people who will be working at night and sleeping during the day. It's very hard to get good sleep during the day because there's a lot of things that are happening. There's noises. There's all kinds of things that can actually disrupt the sleep. 
Uh, exposure to light is, is critically important. Uh, if, you, if you are trying to sleep during the day and you see bright light before, uh, before you go to bed, it's much harder for you to get to sleep. So, but this is what we call the, the circadian rhythm, this 24-hour rhythm. Uh, we see changes in the body temperature. Um, we see uh, hormone changes. And these are things that, that you don't, you can't just will away. This is, this is, these are physiological patterns. And it takes um, days to adjust to that. You'll notice it for yourself when you travel to a new time zone. You'll experience jet lag. That's just that time that it takes your body to adjust to that new time zone for that circadian rhythm to catch up. And we generally talk about it takes uh, about a day per hour of shift. So if you're, tra uh, if you're going to, say, six or seven time zones, you need to anticipate that's going to take about a week to adjust to that for your body to catch up with that. But it's a, a biological imperative. That's what happens. That's how your body responds. And again, it's not under your control. But it's something that we have to, uh, to uh, take into account as we're planning the, the work that people do. When you think about an alternative watch schedule, we think about some of the traditional Navy watch standing schedules, the five and dime, uh, five and 15. You think about uh, port and starboard. A lot of these watch standing schedules do not operate on a 24 hour day. They don't lend themselves to that. Like the five and dime is a 15 hour day or a 30 hour day if you double it. Same kind of thing with a six and 12, an 18 hour day. Um, and humans just do not, we do not adapt to anything other than about a 24 hour day. And so when I think about a circadian based alternative watch standing schedule, it would have to be uh, uh, based on a 24 hour day. And that's what we're, we've been promoting. We've been trying to suggest that people might want to consider a three hours on, nine hour off watch standing schedule. They would repeat that twice, so they would stand six hours of watch, but the three hours that they stand um, is not such a long period of time that they get too fatigued, overly fatigued, but they still get their six hours of, of, of watch standing in, and they ha still have adequate time to rest. In practice, some ships have used a four-section circadian rotation with three hours on and nine hours off. Captain Cordell explains the benefits of this particular rotation that he used on a seven-month deployment aboard the USS San Jacinto. The implementation of the three-nine watch rotation um, was really the idea of one of my junior officers who brought it back from a visit to the shipboard safety uh, uh, simulator. That did two things. One, it gave us a short watch, so three hours was time that you can focus and stay focused. Uh, and it gave nine hours, which was time enough for one session to do work, PMS, whatever. And then in, this, in the next nine hour session, you could sleep, PT, eat. Um, and so uh, it gave really two big benefits was the short watches um, and the stability of the day you could plan around. The Fatigue Avoidance Scheduling Tool, or FAST, can display the results of fatigue in terms of reaction time and effectiveness. The green zone is the desired level of effectiveness to perform complex activities like driving a car or standing a watch on a ship. The yellow zone indicates degraded performance, and the red zone is essentially the equivalent of driving drunk. The first graph shows the results of a person standing a three-section rotating watch. The second graph shows the results of a four-section stable circadian watch. The difference is clear. But it is more than a watch bill. Many other things need to change to support the watch standards. Some of the changes we did to the ship's routine, um, some were planned in advance and some we sort of backed into. So I'll give a couple of examples. Um, we initially signed out a watch bill by itself. Uh, the first sign that we had made a mistake was that sailors were showing up on watch with food stuffed in their pockets because we didn't adjust the meal hours. So if, for instance, you had the 6 a.m. watch, the mess line didn't open up until 6, so you missed breakfast. So, uh, you know, we sort of broke the, uh, the, the Maslow triangle of sleep, eat, work. Um, and so uh, we adjusted the meal hours. That was the first thing. 
Um, then we looked at all the meetings that were happening throughout the day. And uh, if you expected someone to go to a meeting, it needed to be in the meet of the day between 9 and 1500. So we codified that and said, if you're going to hold an all hands meeting or training or drills, uh, do it at that time. So those were a couple of them. And then there were some outliers like the evening prayer, um, that instead of doing it and taps at 2200, when people were in the middle of their, of their sleep time, uh, we moved it to lunchtime and, and did it at that time. So those are just a few examples of uh, places where we adjusted on the fly. There are some lessons learned that can help other ships in building a circadian watch bill from an operational standpoint. The benefits that I saw um, when we implemented this watch wheel really fell into two categories. One was the people on watch. Um, if you talk to the watch standards, especially on the mid watches, if you look back at, at history of you know, when bad things happen, they happen between midnight and 6 a.m. Um, it's when the watch standards are at their most tired, your body has a natural dip at that time. Um, so to stand a mid to three versus a mid to five is a huge difference in alertness and, uh, and, and just the watch standard's ability to do their job. Um, so that was immediately apparent. Um, the, uh, the second was the circadian nature of sleeping at the same time uh, and having that predictability for your body uh, to regenerate was very important. Rather than sleeping uh, at, you know, today you sleep during the night time, the next day you're here in the afternoon, the next day you're in the evening. Um, the other thing was the stability of the watch build that allowed people to plan their day. So the secondary effect was uh, some watch teams PT'd together. So uh, I heard the folks on, on Jason Dunham mention that they had a great PT program. Um, they may not realize it, but I think a part of that was they had a great PT program because they had a stable watch rotation. Um, so some of the benefits weren't even immediately visible as related back to the watch bill. The other one in the engineering plant was heat stress that I saw um, a, an increase in or a decrease in the issues with heat stress in the Gulf in the summertime it can be very hot, 100 degrees or more. Um, but three hours in the plant um, is below the heat stress curve, so you never have to adjust the watch bill. And nine hours out of the plant affords the body enough time to recover. Um, so combined with PT, hydration, and sleep, uh, heat stress became a non-issue for a ship using this watch bill. Looking at the process from a scientific standpoint, there are obvious benefits. So when we go out to do the sleep studies, we take with us, we take sleep watches. So they're just wrist-worn uh, watches that actually indicate when uh, a sailor is awake or asleep. We take those. We also have um, some reaction time tests that the sailors We'll, we'll take and we generally give those to them before and after their standing watch. Um, and so we, we go out, we issue these and basically uh, let them go and, and do their normal activities. And then we come back, uh, back to the lab and we analyze the data. And that's really been, I think, the, the uh, overwhelming evidence that, that they're getting more sleep and they're their performance is changing, their performance is improving. So I think that's the, the, the big encouragement for us. When we, you think about the advantages of the, of the alternative watch standing schedule, I think one of the big advantages is that we know that, that I know when I'm going to be working and I know when I'll have an opportunity for sleep. And it's critically important for humans to get on a, a regular sleep cycle. You need to know, okay, this is the time I want to go to bed uh, and this is the time I wake up. And if you can do that, that really helps the body tremendously. You, you condition yourself to going to bed at a certain time and waking up. So that's, that's one of the, the big advantages of this, this schedule. And what we find is that if you are able to, to get the sleep, to, to actually take advantage of that time that you have off to sleep, we see that reaction time is, is reduced. In other words, you, you're able to respond faster, quit more quickly. We have the science behind it so that we can actually measure your performance. We can come out and we can see how much sleep and what the performance of the sailors um, actually is. And that, I think, is a, a huge advantage now that we can actually determine that, not just say, this is what I think about it, but here's what the performance, here's what the, the data indicate. You ask about lapses, performance lapses, and one of the measures that we, we collect when we go out to the ship, we look at what's called psychomotor vigilance. And one way that we measure 
uh, psychomotor vigilance is just by your reaction time, by the number of milliseconds it takes for you to respond to a signal. Another metric that we use is called lapses. And a lapse is defined as um, any time that you, you see a target, but you don't respond for 500 milliseconds, for half a second. So that's what we respond, that's how we, we define a lapse. So what we see with those individuals working the 3-9 versus those on the 6-6 is a, a difference in the lapse rate. So um, in a lapse, uh, a lapse is so important because if I think about I've, I'm, I'm tracking a target or I'm looking at something, I'm monitoring something, and I'm looking for, for something to occur, a lapse would be that situation where I miss that target completely. So that's, that's what a lapse is. And so you could imagine in a situation where, where I'm supposed to be detecting a target and I miss that target, then um, I some, something bad could happen. I could have a, a mishap could, could be caused by, by that missing that target. There are also strong correlations between lack of sleep and stress. The relationship between sleep and resilience and stress, I think that that's a very interesting, very interesting relationship. What we know is that um, if you don't get enough, you don't get adequate sleep, then um, there's a, a high correlation between undersleep and overstressed. So when you, when you are stressed, you don't get sleep, and um, we don't know exactly the causal link there. It's not, it's not as simple as to say, okay, uh, I'm stressed so I don't get sleep, or if I don't get sleep, then that contributes to my stress. We don't know which causes which, but we, we know that they're closely associated with one another. So there is this, uh, this close association with that. We look at, at for example, in post-traumatic stress disorder, one of the key signals, one of the key signs of PTSD is sleep issues, when there are sleep disturbances. So we know that there are these, these close ties. We also know that if you don't get adequate sleep, that healing doesn't occur, and I believe that that that's not just physical healing, it's also mental, emotional healing as well. So critically important for you to get that, to, to, uh, to, to be healthy. The connection between watch standing uh, and sleep um, leads directly back to stress. Um, one of the things that I noticed in command in both of my tours is uh, uh, we tend to operate on a high level of stress. Um, stress is exacerbated by lack of sleep. Uh, lack of sleep is made worse by a watch bill that doesn't support sleep. So I think there's definitely um, a tie between the watch bill, the sleep, the priority of sleep, uh, the stress of the sailors. It also matters how you rotate the watch. It can be compared to travel across time zones as Dr. Shattuck has found. So when you're thinking about standing an alternative watch watch schedule. What a, a really important point is to think, am I going to have my sailors standing a fixed watch so they will they will do this continuously for the entire deployment? And often we, we say, well it would really we want to rotate our watches. So what we've come up with on the three nine alternative watch standing schedule is a way that we rotate forward. So what we know is that it's much easier for us to extend our day a little bit than to shorten our day. You, you notice this, for example, when you fly from the west coast to the east coast, it's harder to go to bed earlier and get up earlier than going from the east coast to the west coast. So that's what you're doing. When you go from the east coast to the west coast, you're basically extending your day. Um, and, and that's much easier for humans to relate to, to adjust to. So when we look at that, that's what we want to take advantage of that naturally occurring about a 25 hour day. So what we have suggested with the 3-9 watch standing schedule is that, so there would be four sections, each standing a three hour watch. And you would do that for say a two week period. And then um, say on Sunday, you would have 
three of the, the watch sections would stand a four hour watch. That would allow the fourth section to roll in, would have 12 hours off, and then would roll in. Everybody would just extend their day just a little bit. So again, nobody gets hammered, nobody has uh, a six hour watch, there's no back to back watches. The longest watch that anyone stands is a four hour watch. As Dr. Shattuck has learned, it takes more time than we think to recover from sleep deprivation. But what we know is that as we accrue sleep debt, a chronic sleep debt over days, it takes many days to recover from that. So it's not just this immediate rebound. So um, when you have a sailor that's working on a, on a chronic sleep debt, so he's building this debt up over over days, over weeks, and then perhaps he, he's then faced with a situation where he gets an acute sleep deprivation uh, episode, like, oh, now I've got to do an unwrap or some, some unscheduled uh, event occurs, then I, I'm really down, I'm really in a big sleep debt, operating under a big sleep debt. So it, it will take days and days to recover from that. As a matter of fact, I've had skippers who've talked to me about being in um, operating under s severe sleep deprivation, and they've reported that it takes as much as six months for them to, recur, uh, to recover and to feel fully recovered from that. The body also needs time to adjust to a new schedule. Dr. Shattuck recommends that each command decide what works best for them. To have the, the least amount of changes as you can. So you don't want to extend someone's day more than an hour or two hours because it's going to take them a couple of days to adjust to each hour, each hour of, uh, of extension of change in your time zone. So what you want to be able to do is um, is to, to give them adequate time to adjust to that schedule and then to let them take advantage of that for an extended period of time. So I would say a two week period is probably a good way to start out. What we know is that, that um, there's not gonna be one schedule that's gonna be right for everyone, for each department, for each ship. And so I think that's what, what uh, we really need to have people do is to take advantage of that to to play with that a little and to see what works and to try some things out and see what seems to work for, for their sections. But I, I think we have the science behind it so that we can actually measure your performance. We can come out and we can see how much sleep and what the performance of the sailors um, actually is. And that I think is a, a huge advantage now that we can actually determine that, not just say, this is what I think about it, but here's what the performance, here's what the, the data indicate. Other commands have implemented similar watch rotations with positive results. Here are the comments from the commanding officer of the USS Barry. I'm the XO on this ship. We're on deployment. And we had heard uh, from Cos Cordell at the time about the circadian rhythm watch. Well, he was an advocate and he had done it on his ship and he found it to be successful. He was in contact with the academics who had devised this and done their own studies. Um, so we said, why don't we try it? So we did a couple months of figuring it out, how we were gonna do it. We just finished a nine month deployment. The first three months of that were on the traditional five and dime watch bill, which, which most ships do. Uh, we went to the circadian rhythm watch bill, which was the three on, nine, nine off watch, watch bill. And, and uh, for us, it was an unqualified success. Not every mishap that the Navy's had has involved fatigue. It's been poor procedural compliance. Um, lack of situational awareness, um, maybe a little bit of not caring as much, uh, or complacency. Um, but those who do involve sleep deprivation have been catastrophic in some cases for our force. I am new to the circadian rhythm and the three and nine. I look forward to, to seeing it on board Barry. Uh, Barry has used it in the past and they, they was very well received. By and large, um, the CSs, the cooks were the only one who's, who could make an argument that their schedule was adversely affected because breakfast went a little bit earlier. But even they, at the end of the day, found themselves with more time off at the end. So after a couple of weeks of a break-in period, um, it's the way we're going to do business in Barry from this point forward, at least while I'm in command. I think to tie it all in, it really is just 
manage your time off watch. And while on watch, stay on your watch. Keep the ship safe, do your mission. Implementing a circadian schedule aboard ship is a proven way to reduce fatigue during underway operations and is a low-cost way to improve watch stander endurance and effectiveness and perhaps prevent a costly mishap. This is an example of an actual watch stander on a five and dimes rotation. You can see that the level of effectiveness is significantly degraded. This is exactly the situation that can lead to mishaps and mistakes, but it can be avoided. The reason that we need to have adequate sleep in the Navy is we want our warfighters to be alert. Um, we know that we live in a very dangerous world. There are threats from all kinds of sources. We need to be alert to those things. And so what we need is we need to have the, the highest alertness that we can for our individual sailors. So getting sleep is really, is really the, uh, a critical element of that. You have to, be, you have, to have adequate amounts of sleep to, to maintain alertness. And what we know is that um, if you deprive someone of sleep, in fact, you can see this very predictable drop in their alertness. And to the point that, that, I mean, we really equate the two, alertness and sleep. There's a, a very close relationship between sleep deprivation and mishaps. We, we can look at, at any, whether it be in, in civilian industry or in the Navy, uh, we see this across the board. We know that, that sleep deprivation is highly correlated with mishap rates. So when we have people that, that, for example, in the aviation community, there's a reason that they have crew rest because, in fact, um, many mishaps were tied to directly associated with sleep deprivation. So this is something that, that we, we recognize, we acknowledge, uh, and, and we know that, that in, other, in order to, to address these, the, the safety climate and in order to to come up with a, a better, safe, a safer climate, what we need to do is we need to give people adequate opportunities for sleep. The watch bill has been well received on several ships. Dr. Shattuck has interviewed numerous sailors and the response of the fleet has always been very positive. But in the words of Dr. Shattuck and Captain Cordell, it is not one size fits all and it requires some planning. So I think the, the observations that I have been able to make while I was doing, uh, while I've gone out to the ships, the, the sailors that I've watched doing this, it seems to me like there's this, uh, a, a lot of enthusiasm about this. The sailors are tired. The, the watches that they've been working um, really are very fatiguing, and so they're ready to try something new. It seems like they always, they they try that, that's the first one, and I think that it's probably they're falling back on experience, and this is how I was taught to do this, so we do the reverse rotation. Um, but, but what I've noticed is sailors are really eager to do this, and, and the ones that I've seen that have tried the 3-9 really seem to like it a lot. So um, you ask about what we've learned from our studies, and it's pretty amazing what we've seen when we compare the three nine and this was just a, a fixed two week period where they're standing the same three nine watch what we see is when we compare it for example with the port and starboard six on six off we see that they're getting significantly more sleep the three nine watch and their performance is also better their reaction times are quicker and so they're more alert and they also prefer this schedule. So uh, a big difference between those two um, and in terms of, of taking the advantage of the opportunity for sleep and just to, to be able to, to get good sleep during that, that time off. So the crew's reaction to this, uh, the, the initial reaction was as somewhat you know, familiar to the SWO community is, um, this is ridiculous, it'll never work, we can't do it on a ship. Uh, there's too many obstacles. Um, so uh, there was a lot of pushback, I think, both at the senior level and the junior level um, until we implemented it and they realized that we were committed to it. Um, and, uh, and we made some adjustments based on feedback from the crew. And I think each one of those was important. Buy-in at the top, 
uh, buy-in at the chief's mess, um, and then the ability to, to make changes when you realize that your initial plan didn't work. Um, I will tell you that I had, uh, in general, the officers who stood, you know, the, the more, uh, more watch-standing focus and administrative focus, they loved it. Um, it allowed them to plan their day, execute their job. Um, the junior enlisted, whose work was, in, was either watch standing or, or basic maintenance um, and working out, they, you know, the younger folks where they want to work out, they want to play video games, they loved it. The technicians who had a, a, a balance of work and watch standing um, struggled sometimes with finding that balance because when you're the IFF tech and your gear breaks, um, you're the only guy that can fix it. Um, manning was a challenge. Uh, and, uh, and required some creative uh, approaches to, to address manning shortages. And for some divisions, it just didn't work at all, and we had to figure out an alternative. So uh, I think that the secret was, though, not to throw the baby out with the bathwater and say, well, we can't do it everywhere, so we just won't do it. Rather, let's find a way to make it work, bridge, combat, and engineering, where those watch standards can be the difference between a, a collision or, a, or, a, or a, a missile fired at the wrong target or something like that. At the end of the day, it is the responsibility of leadership and of the individual for limiting fatigue. Dr. Shattuck and Captain Cordell offer a few final thoughts on the implementation of a circadian watch bill. Um, one of the challenges with doing this was we can provide the time for individuals to sleep, eat, work out. Um, that doesn't mean they're going to sleep, eat, and work out. Um, they're going to play cards. Uh, they're going to play video games. The same sailor who will complain about sitting in front of a radar screen for six hours will walk right over to the mess decks and play video games for six hours and have a great time uh, when he should be sleeping. Um, so I think there's two pieces of it. One of it is uh, the personal responsibility. My job on watch is to be awake and alert. Um, so how do I do that? Um, I have to get sleep. I have to eat. And I have to realize it's my job uh, to take responsibility for that. Um, but as a supervisor, I also have to make choices that affect my people. And once in a while, I have to lay down the law um, and have the support that, of the chain of command um, that I'm going to allow that sailor to sleep. Or sometimes, if it comes down to it, um, I'm going to tell that sailor to sleep. Um, you also have to look at the birthing compartments. And are you conducive to sleep in the birthing compartments? Some ships have lounges that are separate. Some don't. Um, Maybe if you had watch standards in the same rotation, you could put them in the same uh, area of berthing. Maybe officers could room together if they had the same rotation. You know? So um, the challenge here is that the list of things that you could do differently is infinite. Um, and so if you're looking for someone to say, do this, do this, do this, do this, um, that's not the way the Navy works. The Navy works is we give you some parameters, um, and you work within them, and you make choices, and you set priorities within your command. The relationship between um, personal responsibility and sleep, I think that for, for sailors it's critically important that we put this responsibility on them uh, in the same way that they would not, uh, they wouldn't, we wouldn't ask them to stand watch when they hadn't, hadn't eaten. Um, we need to have, they need to know that, that this is their responsibility to take advantage of the opportunity for sleep. And, Sometimes that doesn't happen. I mean, I, I, I've seen situations where sailors would, in fact, decide, oh, I'm going to go play video games. I need a t time, some downtime. And they get uh, involved in that, and they don't sleep. They don't take advantage of that sleep opportunity. So I think it's really important that we put this responsibility back and, on their shoulders, that we tell them, you know, here's your time for sleep, and you must take advantage of that. The uh, three and nine rotational watch bill um, is a uh, is a tool in your toolbox. It's not something that the Navy is going to tell commanding officers to implement, um, but I think it's reasonable that we could give it to them as an option, educate them on the on the goods and the bads, um, and then let them make that choice. Um, but again, it comes down to priorities. A ship at sea is only as good as the individuals who are standing watch. The weapon systems can be perfect. Um, if the person at the console with his finger on the button or driving uh, the ship um, is not at the top of his game, um, then the ship's not going to perform properly. And uh, uh, the, the uh, Fleet Forces commander made a comment uh, yesterday at a presentation I saw that one mishap can negate an entire year's worth of training and a year's worth of goodness. Um, 
and perhaps a life. And uh, so he made a great point that, you know, the cost of doing business out there at war may be an injury or a death. Um, that's just part of the military. Um, but in the training environment, in the maintenance environment, absolutely unacceptable. And uh, so I think that's something, um, does something have to give? Possibly. Um, maybe there's a piece of the administrative routine that has to move or, or be delayed or someone else has to do it. Um, but you have to make that priority that the ship's operations uh, and the performance of the crew is number one. If your priority is alert watchstanders who are prepared to operate the ship in a safe manner, um, then I think you will, you will be inclined to do some version of this watch build. It may not be three and nine, it might be four and twenty or something like that. But look at the art of the possible and don't throw the baby out with the bathwater because you can't do the whole thing. One of my favorite quotes is by Captain Nick Davenport, who was here at the Naval Safety Center as the command flight surgeon. Um, he says, fatigue is so prevalent and such a part of our culture that we scarcely see or recognize it. It's the big gray elephant we muscle out of the cockpit when we fly, step around when we enter the bridge, and push aside when we peer into the periscope.